I wasn't planning to do this. I wasn't planning to film a video. I wasn't planning to do my hair. I was actually planning to have a potato day today, which means like a day where you do nothing. I needed to do office work, paperwork, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. But then spontaneously we got a call and then it goes from potato day to professional day. And then what do you do? You have to get your shit together really, really, really fast. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kayla and I'm so happy that you're here. You're so far away. Wait, come closer. Okay, actually you can stay right there because it's kind of better when you can see the full hair effect. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I do my hair fast. This is my rush job. Rush, oh. This is my rush job blowout. <laughs> This is how I do my hair when I need to go really, 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 really fast. So if you are familiar with my content, you've seen some of my other tutorials with Velcro rollers and stuff. That's also a really beautiful way to get a blowout look, but it's kind of time consuming. So I like to do that sometimes, but what you have to do then is put these curlers in your hair and then leave them for like an hour, which is only good if you have like two, three hours of spare time. Today, I didn't. So this is how I take my hair from wet to looking like this in 28 minutes. I was literally so curious how long it takes me to do my hair from like wet to looking very polished when I'm hurrying. And so this is like kind of the fastest blowout that I can do. I think uh, if I was strategic, maybe I could shave like four or five minutes off, but I have really, really, really long hair. Long hair girls can relate. I think 28 minutes is pretty good, but you have to tell me what you think in the comments below. I think it's fast. That's a speed blowout for me. Okay, <laughs> let's get into the tutorial. And if you stay tuned until the end, I'm gonna check in with you after my job tonight, and I will show you how my hair has held up after around eight hours. Okay guys, so here I am. Like I said, potato. I did leave the stopwatch running the entire time, including when I switched the tools and when I went and grabbed stuff from the other room, I kept the stopwatch running the whole time. And I actually really was in a huge hurry here, so I didn't have time to perfect my camera setup. Please forgive any inconsistencies with framing and focus. When I started this video, I had been out of the shower for one hour. So I got out of the shower, I took my dogs for a walk, I had wet hair, I had a beanie. I So my hair's a little bit air dried here, is what I'm trying to say. My advice is get out of the shower and then do as much other stuff as you can before you start drying your hair. Because the longer it air dries, the less work you have to do. So the first step here is just a good rough dry. As you can see, I'm moving really quickly. I'm moving around a lot. I'm not staying too long in one place. I'm not using any tools or any attachments. I'm just drying my hair as quickly as possible to get the majority of the moisture out. The blow dryer that I'm using here is the Dyson Supersonic and it's kind of a funny story because I also have the Dyson Airwrap and I'm also going to use the Dyson Airwrap in this. You don't need either of these but in my experience they're nice to have. I got my Supersonic first and it was at the time that the air wraps were impossible to find and I still kind of wanted a Dyson so I went ahead and bought this Supersonic and then like a year later the air wraps became easier to find and so then eventually I did also buy one of those. It is admittedly too much money to have invested in blow dryers, but here we are. The heart wants what the heart wants, and women do not have to apologize for our own financial decisions. Men will never, ever, 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 ever understand the convenience of drying your hair 10 minutes faster or just a little bit better. They don't have to live with it, and so they don't get to complain about it. Okay, rant over. This super special and super fancy move right here is called the Cousin It, and I swear to you, I invented this. I do not think that anyone else does this. But as you can see, I cut my hair in half from the crown of my head, and then I flip half of it up and half of it down so that all my hair is covering my face. That shelf of hair for me doesn't really get dry unless I put the heat directly on it. To get great volume, everything has to be completely dry, so I always have to double check that spot because that will weigh down a blowout if you leave it damp. So as you can see now we're out of the cousin it phase and I'm just kind of finishing the rough dry because I've gotten enough moisture out of my hair that I can kind of work with it. 
And the tool that I'm about to use for the rest of this video is the Dyson Air Wrap. It is a multi-purpose styling tool with six different blow dry attachments. I always assume that everyone knows what this is, but maybe if you don't, this is the air wrap. I'm using the curling attachment right now. The way it works is actually pretty innovative. It creates a vacuum effect that sucks the hair around the barrel so that it dries and curls at the same time. I have had mine for about two years and I'm still obsessed with it. It is my favorite way to do my hair. Okay, I don't know exactly how much detail to go in here, and so if I'm giving too much or too little detail, please tell me in the comments because I'm just not sure. So obviously I'm starting by sectioning my hair, and I actually do clip the sections up when I'm using the air wrap. It just works better if I can keep everything out of my way and be pretty precise. I also have long and thick hair, and so I have to work in pretty small sections to get the most out of this air wrap. Nowadays, you can get extra long barrels created for long hair, but at the time that I bought my air wrap, those were not available. Now you can custom create your own kit, and so you can choose the long ones. But back then, you couldn't, and so I have always kept this short one because I'm not gonna put another 70 bucks into this thing. It's already super expensive as it is but I can make do with this small one and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so because my hair is so long and I have the short barrels here, I focus on my hair in two chunks. First, I work from the bottom up and create the curl. And then when I cannot go any further up, I'll stop and work from the top down. This method provides me with a lot of volume right at my roots and it ensures that I concentrate on them rather than just working on my ends. This might seem really unclear right now, but I promise you I will give you enough examples through the duration of this video that you will understand what I'm talking about. And when I create my curls, I'm only picky about one thing. I curl away from my face. On both sides, I choose the attachment that pushes the curls back and then away from my face rather than in towards my face. I just prefer how that looks. I can't explain it. So let's go through this one more time with a fresh curl. I'm starting here at the bottom. So first I'm just drying, curling the bottom, drying, curling the bottom, and then I switch there to doing the top. Okay, bottom again, and then we switch to the top. And then I go from the root and I go down, focusing on building volume and creating an even curl. And I find that keeping it in motion a lot and kind of going up and down makes it dry faster and makes it look very voluminous. So this is where the volume comes from is when you move it a lot as I'm doing right now. As you can see here, I make my very best effort not to keep my ends around the air wrap the whole time because I just think that when you start from the bottom and then curl up, if you trap your ends underneath there the whole time, it's just not good for the most fragile part of your hair. So I do a mix of ends in, ends out, etc., to build the even and dry curl. And really, when I do like a curling iron or something, I do much bigger sections, but for this Dyson, you just have to work in sections like not much wider than this, otherwise it doesn't work at all. Now we're moving on to the next section and I do what I would call chaotic sectioning. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna pull out a random chunk of hair. I think we're gonna go for the root first, right? So I'm drying it there, injecting some volume, and then I'm slowly gonna work down. It is a little bit tedious, but even when I'm rushing, I just always have better results if I'm thorough. Also, do you wanna know what's psycho? When I filmed this, I had a podcast on. So I have AirPods on and you can't even really see it there, but I'm listening to something while I'm filming. I don't do that every time, but it does actually help to pass the time. So now this is the most important piece for me, the little bangy front piece. And as you can see, I'm just trying to make sure that the hair is straight and flat when it goes onto the air wrap so that it doesn't get any weird lumps or bumps in it. And obviously I always push my bangs away from my face. I think this curl is a really clear example of my process, so I'm gonna try to explain it one more time. I don't even know if it's necessary to explain, but you see I'm always going at my root first and then moving through my hair shaft and then I'm going to the bottom to make the little curly curl. Then I work my way back up until I can't go any further. See, my hand is like stopped there. I can't go any further. So I'm just gonna wait like 10 seconds until I have a really defined curl. This iron thing is super hot. 
when my ends feel good and dry, I go back up to the root and I'm taking the hair under and then over top of the air wrap to mimic the same wrap that it would have on the bottom, but I'm keeping my ends out, of course. And I'm not sure if there's something to be said for holding the air wrap vertical or horizontal. Where I can, I try and hold it vertically, but sometimes I need to hold it as I am here horizontally. I basically change it around as I see fit when I need it. And one thing that I haven't shown in this video is that I do have to change the heads based on which direction I want the curls to go, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Once you have it in your hands, like you see which one is the right one to be using. Okay, this is the last chunk of hair and my most important chunk, my favorite chunk. So I'm going to spend a lot of time here because I want it to be big and voluminous and fluffy. So you can see I'm going all the way up to my root and I'm spending extra time there, moving it back and forth, making sure that at the root there's tons of volume and it's super dry. Here, any last bits of moisture are the enemy because they'll make your hair fall flat in like 20 minutes. So spend the time to make sure at the root, everything is completely dry. So now I'm done, dun 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 dun. It's been, ta-da! Not bad, right? It's totally like a movie star blowout right there. I'm so happy. And we did it in exactly 28 minutes and five seconds. Now I just have to throw on some makeup and then I'll be ready for my meeting. This is the finished hair and we did this all from wet in 28 minutes. I have tons of volume. I like how it looks and I'll be able to hold this for like four or five days if I'm lucky. <sighs> is 28 minutes fast? <laughs> I'm not sure anymore. I thought maybe I could do this in like 15 um, and maybe you probably could, but it doesn't really matter. I am super happy with how this look turned out. And I think that's a pretty fast turnaround time. If I can do this makeup look in 10 and this hair in 30, then you know, 40 minutes getting ready for something super professional is not that bad. Anyway, this is also not an everyday thing. When I do a blowout like this, as you guys know, it's so hard on your hair that then I try and keep my hair fresh like this for four or five days. And then I will transition to ponytails and hats for two days. And that's how I kind of stay how do you say this? Keeping this hair for one week. That would be a different video. <laughs> I'm happy to show you a different time, but I'll check in later in the day. Hi guys, we're back. It's late. It is now, oh, not as late as I thought. It's 8, 10 PM. And I just came over to check in because I think my hair held up really well. So this is it maybe it doesn't have quite as much volume as in the morning but i think actually i think it has quite a lot of volume and it still has this kind of soft curl and wave at the bottom so overall without a lot of fuss without any velcro rollers the blot held up pretty well so thank you guys so much for watching that was how i do my hair in 28 minutes why did i really have to think about that so guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. That's how I do my hair super fast and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, have a good night, bye. Mm. I'm going to make ramen. I'm going to make creamy, spicy ramen. Okay, bye. You guys, I keep touching it because like I want it to look good on camera, but it's like, Gonna mess it up if I keep touching it. I love this hanging chair, but I'm not confident if it's the perfect place to film things. <laughs> also, I wanna show you my outfit. Look at these shoes. Okay, I'm wearing little Jesus top, jeans, and then bleach dyed socks and Birkenstocks, and I am feeling it. It's a fit. Okay.